The lamina propria is also a part of the oral mucosa that is underneath the epithelium. For descriptive purposes, it is divided into papillary, superficial layer, and a reticular deep layer. The reticular layer contains bundles that are loosely attached of collagen fibers. Wholly, both layers are called lamina propria. The dense connective tissue underneath is the submucosa that contains blood cells, nerve fibers, and also salivary, minor salivary glands. The lamina propria along with the submucosa, they constitute the mechanical protection and the nutrition for the epithelium. Epithelial connective tissue interface can be ultrastructurally divided into two layers, a lamina lucida and a lamina densa. This basement membrane has a characteristic desmosomes, hemidesmosomes, that connect the basal cells with the connective tissue underneath. Along with the hemidesmosomal connection in the basement membrane, what keeps the attachment of the oral epithelium to the lamina propria is the undulated or the wavy surface of the interface. We see a scanning electron microscope, the papilla of the connective tissue that are penetrating into the epithelial ridges. This interlocking between the epithelium and the connective tissue is what helps the ultrastructural attachment along with the hemidesmosomal connections lying on the basal lamina. Moving to the subdivisions of the oral mucosa according to their function and their location. The oral mucosa is subdivided into three parts, the lining mucosa, which, which is most of the total surface of the mucosa, constituting 60%. This is the labial mucosa, buccal mucosa, alveolar mucosa, the floor of the mouth, the ventral surface of the tongue, and the soft palate. This mucosa functions little in the mastication and therefore there are no high friction forces. It is therefore soft and playable and non keratinized The masticatory mucosa on the other side constitutes 25% and composes the free and the attached gingiva along with the hard palate. Here it functions mostly with the mastication and has therefore to be rigid and rubbery texture to help in the food mastication. It is a keratinized epithelium. The specialized epithelium oral epi or mucosa is 15% of the total surface. On the dorsal surface of the tongue, which is covered with cornified epithelial papillae, along with lingual tonsils, the vermilion border of the lip, and the junctional epithelium. The masticatory oral mucosa is the heart palate, regions of the heart palate, and the attached gingiva, marked with the black arrows. 
This gingiva is more whitish in color, referring to the keratinization that is taking place. This gingiva and heart palate are subjected to high forces of friction and mastication. A cross section through the moving from the lip, the gingiva, the hard palate, and the soft palate. This side is the keratinized epithelium. And when then we find the bone layer and a, another respiratory epithelium on the side of the nasal cavity. Masticatory mucosa of the heart palate. We see the epithelium, keratinized layer, pronounced reti ridges, and underneath lamina propria. Another section of a keratinized epithelium of the heart palate showing the keratinized layer a distant section for a masticatory mucosa this is the epithelium with the underlying thick lamina propria and underlying submucosa. Again, a keratinized epithelium and a thick lamina propria. The lining mucosa are areas subjected to high levels of distension and compression. It covers the lip, the labial mucosa, the buccal mucosa, and floor of the mouth, as well as the ventral surface of the tongue and soft palate. A section of the lining mucosa showing a partially keratinized epithelium. Fewer Reti ridges that are less profound than the masticatory mucosa, and normally the lamina propria has more elastic fibers. We will go into more details in the next part of the lecture. Thank you for your attention.